Shabbat Shalom. All praises, all honor, all glory, all esteem, all power and rulership to Yahuwah, Elohim, El Shaddai, by Shem Yahushua Mashiach, by the power of the word, Kakodesh, the Holy Spirit. Told uh, everybody for clicking on the video and for checking the, checking out the information. Today we getting back into David Rubini. We're going to start his story today. All praises, all honor, all glory. Um, let's get it, man. Shabbat Shalom. Pray y'all having a good Shabbat. Pray that y'all enjoying life, enjoying the sanctification process, you know, even through the tribulations. You know, Yahusha, through Yahusha, the victory is already ours. The devil is already defeated. He just hating still. Why right? he's still hating? But anyway, we're going to push on. We're going to push forward. Uh, this is the story of David Rubini. So in part one, uh, we read the summary. Uh, so that, that laid down like the overall picture. Now we're about to go into detail. You know, we're about to just get into it. David Rubini. So he was alive from 1522. Well, not alive, but this story, uh, this journal is dated from 1522 to 1525. So this is after 1492 where the uh, Israelites, a.k.a. the Jews, was kicked out of um, not only Spain, but before that, they was kicked out of all of Europe. So right now, being a, a quote-unquote Jew or following the Torah customs is shamed upon in European countries. So, you know, if you was there, you either had to get exiled or you had to convert to European Christianity. Um... So we about to get into his, his journal. Part one. I am David, the son of King Solomon. May the memory of the righteous be for a blessing. And my brother is King Joseph, who is older than I, and who sits on the, on the throne of his kingdom in the wilderness of Harbor, or Korkbar, and rules over 30 myriads of the tribe of Gad and of the tribe of Reuben, and of the half tribe of Manasseh. I have journeyed from before the king, my brother, and his counselors, the 70 elders. They charged me to go first to Rome, to the presence of the Pope. May his glory be exalted. I left them by way of the hills, 10 days journey. Okay, so we got him so far. He, um, he got a mission from his brother, who was the king of some of the North Kingdom that the North Kingdom that got exiled, I believe, first on the other side of the river. Reuben got the Manessa. Yeah, I had to double check that real quick, but um, I believe so. So they they had a kingdom set up, and they they was from Harbor, uh, and through research, and they must have named their kingdom in India the same name, which is interesting. So we gonna see as we go through the story. It says, uh, okay, what happened now? Let me see. It was, a t okay. He, he left them by way of the hills, 10 days journey. Turn the page. Till I arrived at Jeddah, where I was taken with a great sickness and remained five weeks until I heard that a ship was going to the land of Ethiopia. I embarked on the ship in the Red Sea and we went three days. And on the fourth day, we arrived at the city of Sakam in Egypt. I mean, in um, not Egypt, in Ethiopia. Sakam in Ethiopia. So let me show y'all real quick on the map what he talking about. So he was at Jeddah, and then he heard that a ship was going to Ethiopia. So he crossed the Red Sea into the port of Sudan. All right, and then he went to a city called Sakam or um, Sukam in Ethiopia. I don't know if that's on this map. If you find it or if you know where it's at, you know, and it All right. It says, I took a house and stayed there two months, but I was ill and being cupped, lost 50 pounds of blood. That's a lot. For in order to get better, I had more than 100 applications of hot nails. Afterwards, I met many merchants who were traveling by way of Mecca to the kingdom of Sheba, and I called the chief of them, a descendant of the prophet of the Ishmaelites named Omar Abu Kamil. So this is talking about the Adar kingdom. This I tried to do some research on this 
um, he's talking about northeastern Sudan. So, not the um, Aksum Empire, which is ran by Israelites and um, Gonda, but this is up a little uh, more north, and you had that Islamic kingdom there. And it was ran by a descendant of, the, of Muhammad named Omar Abu Kamil. So let's continue. I took two camels to journey with them, and they were a great multitude with more than a thousand camels. I improved and helped daily, and we passed through the great deserts and forests and passages and rivers. A journey of two months until we arrived at the capital of the kingdom of Sheba in Ethiopia, where resides King Omara, who dwelt... Who, um, who dwells on the Nile. He is a black king and reigns over black and white in the name of his city is La Mula. Okay. So that's this first part of the journey. He's in uh, Sudan right now, which is called the land of the blacks. All right, so we're going we gonna to skip ahead because you know it's a lot. To, uh, to read, you know, let's see right here. We traveled 18 days until we arrived at Sinar, and next morning I and my servant journeyed on further five days on the river Nile until I reached the city of Sheba. So now he's in the, uh, as I was saying, we're going to skip ahead a little bit because it's a lot of information, but we're going to follow the, uh, the trail. So he was scared to be in Sheba. Probably because of the Islamic territory and the rulership, and they despise Israelites. So he says here in this part, I sailed in a small boat on the river Nile until I reached the gates of Egypt. There, the Ishmaelite Turks detained me. They wished to examine my stuff and my boxes in order to take a tie from me. So we see that these people that was in Egypt was under the king of Turkey which was the, um, the future Ottoman Empire. But at this time, it was the Mameluk, the Mameluk Turks. And we see how they was described by our people as Ishmaelite Turks because they, excuse me, they mix with original Arabs, but they really Turkish people. And that's the come they got the lighter skin. But from there, he entered Egypt, Cairo. And then he went to the Jewish quarter. And in the Jewish quarter, he met somebody named Rabbi Abraham de Castro. He was chief of the mint. He was the most esteemed in Cairo. I said to him, I am a Jew and wish to stay with you three or four days. And I will tell you a secret. Put me on the way to go to Jerusalem. I want neither silver nor gold nor food from you, but only lodging. Our Abraham answered, I cannot let you come in my house because you have come disguised as an Israelite. And if you did stay in my house, it would do me harm. I said to him, do me this kindness for the love of Elohim and for the love of the elders. For one good deed leads to another. He answered, it would be good for me and all the Israelites that live in Egypt if you do not come into my house. So we see... Um, he was disguised, David Rubini, he was disguised as an Ishmaelite so that he can get through to Sudan. But when he got to Egypt, he was still disguised as an as a Ishmaelite. So the Israelites was like, dang, we can't let you in our house, bro, because it's going to look bad on all of us. So uh, I left this house, he says right here. I left this house and went into the Ishmaelite and went with the Ishmaelite and came to the house of an Ishmaelite merchant whose name in Hebrew was Zechariah and an Arabic Jahia the son of Abdallah. Then I sold my Ethiopian slave or servant. I switched it up to servant because slave just, it sounded like they trying to hint to something that happened way later. But we do know some of our own people had servants, um, even in the law, it tell you if you have a Hebrew servant. But um, let's just move on. Um, and they traveled with several merchants from Cairo to Gaza. All right, so Ky Cairo to Gaza. So first, he started at Jeddah. He crossed to Sudan. Then he went through the Nile to Cairo. And then he went up to Gaza. Up in um, the land of Israel. Can I get it to clear? Let's see. That's all good. It won't clear, but it's all good. 
right, so while he was in Israel, the land of Israel. Okay, there we go. Let's go to the next page. Okay. In Gaza, he said, um, let me see, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? I want to get to that. Okay. Here we go. We came to a big calm like an encampment, and they gave me one of the upper rooms. And in my room, a Jewish merchant from Beirut was staying, called Abraham Dun. Okay, so in Gaza, while the brother was in Gaza, he ended up meeting another Israelite brother. But when he seen him, he said, um, he said that in his country, Jews cannot talk with any Ishmaelites nor any descendants of the prophet, for they hate us and they love dogs more than Israelites. So this is an Israelite who was living in the land of Palestine or close by at least, and he testified that. The uh, Ishmaelite Turks and the Ishmaelites was not rocking with the Israelites at all and keeping them at a low position. So then he went to Hebron and there was lots of uh, places that the, the Ishmaelites was trying to get him to go, like a tourist spot. But he, he knew his own history and he was like, this ain't true. He was like, he was like this ain't true. Uh, they wasn't, they wasn't uh, buried here. <laughs> you can pause that and read it if you would like. Um, let's see what else okay so now he's going to Jerusalem he says I journey from Hebron we uh, let's do that real quick I journey from Hebron on the 24th Adar and came to Jerusalem and there were robbers on the way my companion said to me our Lord son of the prophet there are enemies before us and I said to them fear not nor be dismayed they are afraid and you are safe I was still speaking when behold, the Turkish, the Turkish judge had come from Hebron with many servants. The robbers saw him and all of them fled and I journeyed with him from Jeru to Jerusalem. Excuse me. So, you know, he kept that faith. And, you know, no robbers was able to, you know, interrupt their journey. And the Most High held them until they got to Jerusalem. Uh, That has superstition. I'm just, I'm just going through. You can pause these pages if you want to really get the in depth. You know, I wish I could go really in depth, but I can't record that much without my phone running out of memory. You already know. <laughs> All this day to Yahuwah, Vashon Yahusha. So he's leaving Jerusalem uh, with the Ishmaelites, and he's going back to Gaza. Um, and he's about to embark on a ship, I believe. He was talking to some of the Israelites. It says, be blessed to the Lord. Remove from you costless hate and return to Yahuwah in order that he may speed our redemption and the redemption of the house of Israel. For this said the elders. I journeyed from Gaza on the 15th Tammuz 5, 5,283. That's the um, Israelite um, year. And in two days reached Damida. He went to the house of a Jew called Mordecai with a brother who lived in Cairo and he stayed with them over the Sabbath and on Sunday he took me to the seashore and we rode on a camel for 20 days along the shore. I embarked on a ship and reached Alexandria. So now he's back in um, Egypt. So next time you know, I'm going I'm to end it right there for now. You know, I'm going to figure out the, the next parts, the highlight for the next part, and um, we can continue on. But he going to be going to, to Rome next. Alexandria to Rome. So we going to... Uh, so, so far... So far, we seen him... Um, let me uh, show y'all the map real quick. So he started his journey off in Jeddah. And then he went to the Port Sedan, to Cairo, to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem back to Alexandria. And next time we're gonna see him go from Alexandria to Rome to continue his mission that was given to him from the king. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. We're gonna end the video there. And uh, till next time, grace and peace in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. Um, check out the music if you haven't already. And continue to praise Yah through all things. Mashim Yahusha. Amen. Praise Yah.
Shalom.